Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. This is episode 27. Make haste! Because I've got to make haste and get this recorded before the boys get home. Um, they've spent the day up at my parents' house while I was at work and with naps and all that, it just worked out that I got home first, so I'm going to quickly record. <laughs> so, welcome. Thank you for joining me. I know you have lots of things you could be doing, and I really appreciate you making the time for me, Steph, Nimi Samurai. <laughs> um, I think we should start the episode with Roland's yarn with you. What do you have? So this is some lovely acrylic. I get a pack of acrylic that he found in a vase in the living room. It was in his locker and he walked up to it and grabbed it out and now he's showing him in his hand. Anyway, so he was having fun and I thought it was funny. Yes, I know he didn't. He has unusual criteria compared to most people when reviewing yarn. But really, that that um, alpaca acrylic blend is top notch in his book. So <laughs> um, let's talk about what I finished. So it's been at least two weeks, three weeks since I've shown you anything. I've done quite a good bit of knitting, and one of the things that is off my needles. Is my 22.5 degrees shawl. This is by Martina Bim, and I used Fiber Nymph Dye Works, her bounce base, in the colorway All the Purples. It is a self striping yarn. It has, I believe, seven. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's not seven. Five. Five <laughs> uh, different shades of purple. And you can see I used four of them twice and then just started for that edging to break into the uh, fifth one. And I had like the tiniest little ball left. I could probably could have squeezed in one more row, but I got nervous and so I, I called it quits. Um, the pattern calls for 389 stitches. Excuse me, 389 stitches you increase before you do this pretty scalloped edging. I knew I didn't have enough yarn for that because she uses Woolmiza. So I increased to 319 stitches, which shorted me. Instead of 38 scallops, I have 25 scallops on each side. It's fine. Like this is unblocked and it clearly hangs onto both sides. So I'm loving it. I can't wait to wear it. I love the color transition right near my face. I think it's really, really nice. Um, yarn is a dream to work with, so no complaints here. Really happy to have it done. I did 98% of it at SSK, um, the knitting on this, but then once I started those scallops, it was really fiddly to do on a plane in that seat, and I just, I figured there had to be an easier way. There wasn't. I came home, looked around on YouTube, and looked, asked for some advice. I was doing it right, it was just a matter of patience, so I finished it. I think this Sunday, like it sat for a week, I didn't touch it because I was annoyed, and then I finished it off this Sunday. So, all done, all done, it's so pretty, it's so hot. Um, so there's that. I can't just put it down like that, right? No, it deserves a little more love. I can't wait to wear it. It's, it feels kind of fallish here today. It's um, 5, 5.30 in the evening. And it's still warm, but in the shade, it's very cool, and there's a lot of breeze, so it's nice out. Um, Lush Sampler Cowl. Carved over by. <laughs> Is it them? Is it them? It's not them. Keep going. Okay. Lush Sampler Cowl. I gotta talk a little faster here, folks. Uh, <laughs> this is with the uh, Louisa Harding... Mono Angora Pure. Um, it's in like a slate blue color. I don't remember the name of the colorway, but it'll be in the show notes. And the Lush Sampler Cowl is by Meg Myers. I am slowly making progress on this. I'm knitting on US size 8, 
every time I knit, of course, my nose goes into like hyper because uh, it sheds so much. Super soft. Oh my god, I can't wait to wear this around my neck. It's gonna be amazing. Maybe I'll gift it though. I don't know. I mean, we'll see after it's blocked. I think that'll really decide whether I'm keeping it or not based on how much it sheds. So. That is slowly coming along. I don't know how well you can see it. You are rather far away this time. But. So it has three different samples. A cable section, a lacy V section, and then see my nose is itching, and then um, knits and pearls making diagonal rows going up it. So it's very pretty. It's very nice. I have two skeins, two balls. I haven't touched one, and I'm not much done on the other. So I... Uh, didn't mean to, but I brought it traveling, thinking it would be a little bit more of a challenge. And it was. I worked on it in the airport. So, that's coming along slowly. I had set myself the goal of finishing Roland's sweater, um, The Best of Your Worsted, by, who is this by? Tracy Hudson. So it's basically a scrappy sweater. <clears throat> I had, I think last time I recorded, I was missing... I just have the body done, no sleeves, so I've since completed one sleeve, there you go, and didn't get the other one done. I was trying to get it done before I went to SSK, but with Roland being sick and then I was coming down with something, it didn't get finished. I did alter the pattern a little and um, pick up and knit a row along both edges, just to sort of even out that garter stitch. I didn't like the way that looked. Um, I left the collar where this did it. I don't know if you could see that part of the pattern design. Not really my aesthetic, but for a scrappy sweater, it's good enough. I'm not um, overly enthusiastic about this. My own fault. Color choices, of course. Why I pick the things I do, I don't know. <laughs> it seemed like a good idea at the time. But um, he'll wear it this fall. It's more. It's very heavy. Uh, U.S. size 8 and it's worsted weight yarn, so it's more of a jacket to me than it is a sweater. So. He'll wear it. I'll be that mom. Make my kid wear the ugly sweater, but it's not a take family portraits kind of sweater. <laughs> so that's coming along. I haven't touched it since I've been back from SSK, which I knew would happen. I knew I'd get back and be like, shows! But there's that. Um, so you know the Maluka by Bia Schmidt that I have been working on for, say, ever. It's finished. It's not blocked. And it's rolling like crazy, right? And you're saying to yourself, Nick Samurai, that is remarkably small for a shawl. I actually wrapped it around Roland's neck, um, and it fits him like a cowl. <laughs> so this is how it comes out on me. I don't know what I did. I followed the instructions in terms of pattern repeats. I have 33 sets of this edging here. <laughs> I have 33 points, but it seems really small to me. So I'm hoping, I'm very, very extremely hopeful that with blocking, it will behave itself because I took a blocking class and now I know how to block lace really well. So if I grab onto the point, pull, see, even if I pull really hard, I'm not getting very far. But maybe it'll curve up. I pull by these. That's about a good size shawl. That's okay. So we'll see. We'll see how disappointed I am. Absolutely love the construction. So I have now knit, I think, seven shawls for my challenge of knitting 12 in 2012. Um, not all different constructions, but four or five different constructions. This has been my favorite, enough so that I'm seriously considering designing something with this sort of design, this edging, and then you pick up along the edging and knit a shawl. I'd like it to be a deeper shawl, but um, that actually <laughs> But you know how it's going to be. It's either going to be when I block it, you can't pull in both directions. You can't block this way and this way. you got to give one. One has to give, and I'd rather have it long, so it's going to be a really narrow shawl. And I have a ton of the skein left over. So this is a wah, wah disappointment. I'll probably block it and gift it just because I don't want to look at it. It makes me sad to look at it right now. So. We'll see about blocking us for it, but it's beautiful. The yarn is beautiful. Alicia goes around in the deciduous colorway, deciduous colorway. 
Um, and yeah, it very good to knit once I got the pattern down. So, and this was knit on US size six. So that's done. Can you guys see my pet? My pal here, my little Linus. He came to chill. Hi, babe. Yeah. So, uh, Steve worries about Linus. He is seven years old. Not Steve, Linus. And um, so he's a Devon Rex, so his, his fur should be very, very wavy. And seven is not old for Devon. They are known to live to 18, 20 years old if well taken care of. Mac is just off screen hitting a piece of paper. That's what that annoying repetitive noise is. Anyways, Linus's waves are starting to just go along his back section here, and so it's pretty much straight back there. Steve gets very upset that his ripples are gone. But I think it's just a, you know, it's distinguished. He's getting older. So <clears throat> Max, the older of the two boys, they're um, one's one litter and then the other was the next litter. So they have the same parents. They're full brothers, but not the same litter. And Max hair is like so much thicker and curlier than Linus is, but Mac is also twice his size. A little overweight, and Linus is our skinny little boy. So enough about the cat. <laughs> um, when I was in Tennessee, I visited the House of Yarn in Nashville. A lot of people did. While I was there, I picked up the Coastal Knits book. Um, <clears throat> I had not seen it in person, and it's a beautiful book. I've actually sat down and read through the whole thing. I think part of the reason I'm drawn to it is that I grew up in Rockland, Maine, right on the coast of Maine, right? And one of the girls, Hannah, is from Portland, Maine, which is an hour or two, hour and a half away from Rockland. So a lot of the places she's talked about I've been to, a lot of her inspirations make perfect sense for my background. So I think it's a really great book. I'm um, not going to do a book review. Lots of people have done book reviews, but I enjoyed reading it. So, and the reason I bought it <clears throat> was that I thought I would be casting off and needing something new to cast on while I was at SSK. So I got it for the, I don't know how long you're going to see this. It's the cover design, the uh, Sand and Sea Charlotte, right? Sand and Sea Charlotte. So it's a beautiful two color shawl. Um, I substituted yarn, of course, of course. But it has, so this purple solid color and then like a feather fan what it looks like to me. I haven't gotten there yet in a teal color that's reminiscent of surf, like the surf on the waves. So I <clears throat> got yarn. This is my teal color. It is a uh, Malbrigo sock in color 855 Aguas. So it's a great, it's more of a green, a green teal than a blue teal. Teal is like the official color. Also, I have a rubber ducky that's an elephant in my knitting bag. That was for Roland for his tub. <laughs> um, and then the other color I got, because I have bags within bags within bags, is color 870 Candom um, and also Malibri Go Sock. I bought this in sock and I also bought it in Rios without realizing I had bought the same color until I sat down and put it in my haul onto uh, my stash page. Oh my freaking god! What the frack? This is the greatest yarn ever! <laughs> Seriously! Like, I want to cover myself in this. Oh, it's beautiful. The drape is wonderful. I'm looking over here to see what size needles. US 5s are what I'm using. And I don't I said. Again, an unusual shawl construction, so I'm enjoying that. A mid-row, I'm sorry. Pretty much always mid-row on this thing. But maybe if I hold it this way, you can see it a little better. It is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I love the color variation. Oh my god, I have to get a sweater's worth of this. Of the sock in this color, it is stunning. So the navies to the, I want to say brown taupe color, and then there's some teal in it. Oh my god. <sighs> I just want to pet it. I want to sleep with it. I want to do bad things with it. It is just amazing. I love this yarn. I know it's not an indie dyer. I'm a bad person. But I do love this yarn. <laughs> so I uh, 
was in the store and I was buying the Archangel, which is the red gold color of this yarn, and then the book talked to me. It said, Nick me next. And so I walked around and said, okay, I'm going to buy yarn while I'm here. And so landed on these two colors because they're similar to the pattern colors. But yeah, yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's pretty much all I want to knit. So don't be surprised if next week I'm showing you a finished shawl with this. Because it's awesome. Just awesome, awesome, awesome. You know, I'm thinking the Stephen West knit along is starting soon. Maybe I will use these two colors, my leftovers for that. I'll have to check the I just want to maximize this. Maximize it. Because I love it muchly. So there's that. That is uh, by Alana Decos. So. And it is from the Coastal Knits book. Yeah. Um, what else have I... Oh, I don't have it with me. It's upstairs and I'm not going to get it. The Wendy Knits Summer Solstice Knit Along. Massive fail on my part. Massive fail. I, he cast on 200 and something stitches. I wanted to make it bigger, so I was shooting for 313. It took me four tries to get my stitches on there because, you know, you don't pull out enough. And finally, I tied the outside end and the inside end together and used that. And so I had a limited supply for casting on, right? Does that make sense? They were both attached to the ball instead of pulling off and then tying and then going with a shorter tail. Anyways, you know, you know. Um, yeah, so I have, finally have the stitches cast on and have one row done. <sighs> I'm not very good for this now long. We'll see. I want to knit it. I know I like it. So, And I'm purposely not going into the threads or the discussion boards so I don't see anything and it is a surprise. So, And for that, I'm using the Dreaming Color Smushy with Cashmere in the Global Mix colorway, which is a very light blue gray color. It's very pretty. I also love that color. So, um, did I show up? Did we look in this bag? We did not. The Hiawassee Creek uh, Farmer's Market yarn, Farmer's Market colorway that I have that I wasn't sure what to do with, you know. I worked on it, of course, at SSK, because that's what it was for. And I finished the first sock, so here you go. It's a shorty it's a shorty sock. It's a uh, four by two rib. The yarn did this very interesting zigzaggy pooling. It was very popular with the ladies I was with. Um, let's see, and I did the Russian, the modified Russian bind off that I had just learned from Laura, and it looks a little, a little puffy, but it sits very nicely having done that. So. I'm pleased with it. I have not yet cast on the second one. I actually finished this and then immediately cast on to knit Karen a cupcake with this. So Karen has a cupcake whose top is high Wessie Creek. So, um, yeah, so that's on the needle semi. It's a hoe. And socks for Steve are the last thing I have, but again, I have just too many things on the needles, so I can't show you everything every week, but I am knitting on those. They're my purse knitting, and I'm past the heel on the second talk, so next week I'll show them to you. And that's it for knitting. I'm not going to have anything new yarn-wise for a while. i got to make up for, for my splurges. Um, I think that's, that's what I have to say. <laughs> I hope... Oh! That's not all I have to say. We have to do prize drawings. All right, so let's do prizes. Um, first up, I'm going to say happy birthday to the July babies. Um, I know that tomorrow, when this is posted, it'll be July 10th, and there are three of you with birthdays on July 10th. So happy birthday to Joan, Beachy Knitter, um, Marsha, Nick Graham, as well as Marilyn, who is PC Marilyn. Happy birthday, ladies. I hope you have a good day. Um, in terms of doing a drawing for birthdays, there are 58 members with birthdays Oops. in July, which, remembering back to my lots of baby trivia from when I was pregnant, I think it's the third most populated birthday month. So 
babies are most likely to be born July, August, and September. So for this one, oh, what are you winning? You are winning this lovely Classic Elite Project bag. It's a drawstring bag, a nice flat bottom with this pattern, and then the other one inside, drawstrings on two sides. It's great. It's a great sock bag. Lightly used, of course. I'm sorry. If you're not interested, you're not. But um, I just don't have a place for it anymore. I have way too many project bags. So the winner is da, 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 da. number three. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm just going to scroll down here. 30 for us is, oh, how funny. Marsha, Nick Graham, happy birthday. <laughs> You are winning this prize, so drop me a PM and I'll get this in the mail for you. Um, yay, that's exciting. <laughs> Next up, we have the Plus One Fellows drawing. So that is, as you recall, every 50 new members to the group, I do a drawing for all of the members. So we crossed a hurdle up to 705. So I'm going to put in two through 700. So this is for the 700 members and we draw and the winner is 173 173 you are winning two scans of uh, cascade fixation it is the color 5099 I actually got these at webs a few years ago it's enough to make a pair of socks um, it's what is it it's 98% cotton, 2% elastane, so it's a would make for a nice stretchy sock. So number 173 is Ingabeam, Kristen, <laughs> I-N-G-A-B-E-A-N, Ingabeam, I think. So Kristen, shoot me a PM and I'll get these in the mail for you. Yay! Um, that is it for the regular stuff. We did have a thread open for a drawing of the String Theory DK in the Bowmore colorway, as you recall. And this was, tell me something that was miserable to knit, but a wonderful finished object. I couldn't control myself, and I did comment a little bit in the thread. So if my one of my posts comes up, we'll just redraw. So. Um, there were 47 replies, so 2 through 47, generate. <gasps> Number 16. Let's see what that is. Is Linda Lark, who is Linda from Scotland. Hey, hey, Linda. I bet you always wanted to work with some of this string theory yarn. What she said was that for me, the have a Furon shawl, Haves Fron, Haves Fron shawl got very tedious and required a quote more than none amount of concentration <laughs> and it looked like yarn barf until it was blocked and blossomed. I'd have liked to have kept it but it was my DD dear daughter's birthday in September so at the moment so at the moment it is safely packed away till then. Nice. I just want to bring up the picture. So she has a pre-blocking, post-blocking picture. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's pretty cool. So Linda, shoot me a PM and I will get that yarn in the mail to you. And for next week, you can win your very own, or next time I should say, your very own piece of SSK. So this is a skein of Hiawassee Creek Dye Works and the color Reliance in her Merino sock base. Um, I think it's 100% Merino yarn if I'm remembering right. And this is a great teal black color, like very variegated teals and then some over dyed black, I would say. But, um, and if I'm remembering right, this is a variegated, not a striping yarn. So, I will open a thread for this beautiful bit of business and tell me about your favorite place to knit in the summer. Everyone's going to say in the backyard. No, let's not do that. Tell me about 
what you would make with this. There we go. That's that's nice and easy. What you would make with this variegated yarn. So, that's it for this week. I hope you have a great few days until we chat again. And happy knitting. Keep on keeping on.